Is it a local derby? Is it not? All we know is it's a massive game for Ipswich Town's slowly ebbing playoff hopes against Cambridge United on Saturday. This is the Blue Monday podcast. Hello and welcome to the Blue Monday podcast, discussing the town up or down since 2015. I'm Richard Woodward and you're tuning into the pre-match show in partnership with our friends at the Greyhound Pub in Ipswich. This is the Cambridge at Home edition and joining me to give you all his insights, all his research, his accumulated wisdom on all things Cambridge United, Seb Brown. Seb, how are you today? I'm okay, mate. Uh, unfortunately, I got the two little lines on a COVID test about an hour oh, ago. Mate. So I know. And then it started snowing up here today as well. So it's been a rubbish, rubbish day. But there we go. Such is life. I will still do my best to try and enthrall you all with wisdom and knowledge and education for the next 45 minutes or so. It's usual, sir. Apart from the fact that you now can't leave your house uh, or shouldn't leave your house because obviously tomorrow the rules don't apply, do they? Um <laughs> We, um, it's usual service. You've done your research as always, impeccable research. So, we will drill into Cambridge. Plenty of stuff to talk about in the news as well. Which will, um, let's just jump straight to the news now. Let's play our little bumper because it's been, I mean, what a, I mean, busy week for the podcast. Um, fantastic to get Mark Ashton on the pod earlier in the week, along with our friends at Those of the Days, along with Phil. Um, and uh, we had the fans forum the, the night before that kind of came out and I felt said we covered some new ground or bits maybe that the folk at the fans forum maybe didn't think about when they were thinking about bottle tops and ball boys. I was going to ask, did you hastily have to scribble out large portions of your script following the, the Tuesday night live stream event where you sat there with Tipex till the early hours trying to make sure that you didn't retread the similar ground? No, it was a, a, a superb interview from you and Phil. Absolutely top work. Great to hear from Mark Ashton on the pod. Great to have him on. And I don't know about you, but the more you hear from him, he's so assured and he speaks so well. And you can't help but feel, can you? Off the pitch, on the pitch, there is there is so much positivity at the moment. You know, it makes you feel so happy to be an Ipswich fan after so many years of, you know, sort of dismissing ourselves and writing ourselves down. It's so great to hear these these people in authority and these people in public domains talk so glowingly about the club. And yeah, absolutely superb. The fans forum was brilliant. Great to hear from McKenna as well. Anytime McKenna speaks, I just stare at him with, with you know, with, with love in my eyes. My love. <laughs> yeah. Uh, great to hear a different perspective from Andy Rolls as well. That, that was great as well. And then, yeah, to you and Phil to get, to get Mark on the pod and hear some some really interesting things yeah it was uh, i certainly i think phil has obviously got a little bit more of a the journalistic angle um and so got in there with some very incisive points and questions um which was great and what was even better was um mark actually he didn't um bat down he didn't we didn't that what you saw apart from me changing the camera sizes the video sizes part way through which i completely forgot to do um rookie error what you what we recorded you saw there was no scripting there was no we're not going to talk about that you got uh, everything unadulterated and as you said i mean he's a professional so he wasn't gonna um you know go off on one or say anything that he shouldn't have but he, what was great was when phil asked him quite specific appointed questions and even some of mine weren't too bad he was forthright and really strong with his responses which only gives people reassurance you know the academy stuff in particular yeah you know i think he's probably had a lot of questions about that a lot of angst maybe over the last few weeks about that there was stuff about the fans forum so it's it's a it's a topic that's out there isn't it so what we want is reassurance along the lines of phil's question that this is something that's been a tradition at the club it's something that as fans we put a lot of um, our heart investment and soul into and it's always something that you want to make sure has been protected and and sounds like Mark Ashton and his team are doing that. And Kieran McKenna is, as we mentioned, has got an eye on pathway in respect of, you know, clearing out some of the players that aren't, you know, senior players that may be blocking the way for the likes of Baggett and Humphreys and, and, you know, Wolfen and was in the team at the time as well. So 
plenty of good stuff there. We talked about Sam Williams as well. Yeah. Which was I was great. really hoping the telly behind him was at some point going to turn on, and we might get to see his infamous data data oh, dashboard. dashboard. Or, yeah, I was really hoping that might power up by mistake, and we could all freeze frame and have a look at some sort of football manager style data hub information. But unfortunately, it didn't come on. But no, a, a superb interview. Great, great to hear from them. And and isn't it refreshing? You know, both at the, the the fans forum and with your interview to just hear people answer the questions directly. You know, no waffle, no no. You know, working around the houses. We live in a world, don't we, of of people on the news talking waffle and purposely avoiding questions and every time these guys are asked something they just bat it straight back with a you know with a with a, with a straight bat and and it's absolutely superb to hear from it's a, it's a, but it makes you feel really really good to be a town fan at the moment yeah and we, and we must um repeat our thanks to or well, certainly to film um we were really to, well together on that and as you said the script was being amended right up until the last minute um my last question was going to be about the kits but under embargo and all that kind of stuff, confidentiality. So I'm sure we'll hear about that soon. But obviously, big thanks to Mark Ashton himself um, for being so generous with his time. We kind of got an extra 10 minutes out of him rather cheekily. So that was great. And also Marcus Nash for making it happen as well. And it's so great that the club now see unofficial kind of independent media as, as a route to get messages out there. So really our, our pleasure to kind of be part of that. And you can still watch it if you haven't already on our YouTube and our podcast feed. In terms of other bits and pieces of news, we've we've had the live show midweek as well. So go and give um, that a watch. Mikey and Joe um, dealing with all the questions that everyone on that live stream were posing to them. Plus, uh, we've got Kieran Stanley coming up in a second to talk about ITFC women. Um, and Maddie Reader, who's the ambassador for her game two. It's the her game two weekend for Ipswich Town, both the men's and the women's team, both at home this weekend. So they will be supporting that campaign as well. So let's go and hear from those two now. Welcome back to the pod, Kieran Stanley, the, the, probably the busiest media man, certainly in the women's pyramid in the last few, maybe in football in general. How are you doing, mate? Have your feet touched the ground yet? Yeah, doing well, thanks, Rich. It's uh, good to talk to you again. It's been a while, isn't it, actually, since the, the last time we spoke on, on one of the podcasts. So um, it's good to be back. And um, yeah, things have just somewhat quietened down now after a very chaotic period. Um, but yeah, it was an exciting period for everyone involved with the, with the football club. And um, yeah, a great learning curve and a great experience for everyone. So yeah, um, I'm glad for the rest because it was 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 pretty exhausting. Um of course, I don't get to fully rest because we've still got you know, the end of our season to complete. But um, yeah, not quite at the scale of what it was like for West Ham, I'll say that. The quiet before the storm, that's what we want. Just talk to us very briefly about that West Ham experience. Was it enjoyable? You were, you were dressed up proper for it, by the way. Notice yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Joe had actually been on at me about that, actually, in advance of the game. He was going to be, you know, are you going to go go with a three-piece suit or, you know, or, or, or bring out a bit of a, you know, smart casual? And I thought, you know what? We're on national TV, so I'll ditch the tracksuit for this game. I'll go with the jumper, the smart jeans, shoes. Marcus Nash got me a nice little club tie. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, town tie. So, yeah, it was um, it was nice. Um, nice to make an effort for that. But, yeah, it was an incredible time for us as, as a football club. I think everyone enjoyed every aspect of it. Um, it was incredibly demanding and... And like I said earlier, that was that was a bit of a learning curve, but but equally like a, a really really enjoyable experience and a real eye opener, especially for the broadcast side of things. I mean, I had multiple conversations in advance of the fixture with the BBC, with the FA's broadcast team, with with countless people, and um, you wouldn't believe the amount of work that needs to go into to hosting a game on national TV. It is incredibly demanding. So I want to say a massive thank you to, to Chris Danes, the chairman at Felix Stone Walton United, and all the volunteers down there at the Gold Star Ground that gave up so much of their free time in advance of the fixture to make sure that the, the ground was ready to host a game of that calibre. They, I believe that some of them stayed until gone midnight the night before the game and then were there first thing at the crack of dawn on, on the Sunday. I mean, it's incredible commitment. And we were all massively grateful for that. And it wouldn't have gone as smoothly if, the, if those people at Felix, though, hadn't have, uh, hadn't have given up their time to do that. So that was amazing. And, of course, we had some good support from the club as well. Um, Lee O'Neill was absolutely brilliant, as was Stuart Hayton uh, and a number of other people behind the scenes. It really made my job a lot easier in terms of trying to get all the logistics and everything in place. Marcus Nash being another one. Um, so, like, yeah, it was, it was really, really great. 
Um, the Friday just before the game was probably the busiest day of my career. A um, press conference and a signing, Kieran. What were you playing at, mate? You had a well, day. Yeah, I mean, it was just supposed to be the press conference, but then the night before, Joe goes, "Oh, by the way, we're signing Silvana Flores tomorrow," <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, well, I've got to try and fit that in now, haven't I?" Um, so I've gone to to Portman Road at nine thirty in the morning, ready for a ten a.m. press conference, giving a quick uh, brief to Paige and Joe. We've probably had. Oof, Across Zoom and in the room, I reckon maybe 13 or 14 journalists um, that are asking questions. It was it was pretty busy. Uh, that went on for half an hour. I'd only planned for 15 to 20 minutes, but it went on for half an hour. And then we went straight out of there, had to go into the warehouse to print Silvana's shirt, ready for the signing announcement. And then Silvana came in. We got everything done with her signing announcement. And then it was pretty much quick bite to eat for lunch straight into the training ground for the evening session i i think i was going for about 10 or 11 hours on the go and i had so much to do my phone battery nearly died on a couple of occasions um yeah an incredibly busy day but yeah i mean you know you've got to get used to it in, in, at this level of football i mean that was a taste of what it's like to, to be at the elite and um yeah no, it was it was great it's just uh by the end of the day, uh, I was I was pretty knackered, <laughs> but um, but all worth it because the Sunday was just absolutely magnificent, wasn't it, Rich? I mean, you were yeah. there. Um, I, I know we lost the game, but for us to, to hold our own in the manner that we did, um, and I think you know some people may not understand the caliber of what we achieved in that game. So for us to be a third tier team, currently semi professional, to play a team that are sat sixth in the Women's Super League fully professional, having the best season in their club history. Just true, Man United. This season, mm -hmm. to, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and defend like warriors like we did, the hearts of Lions, um, you know, to, to, to just give absolutely everything for the badge, for the supporters, for each other, the entire club, like everything. I'm so proud of them. They, uh, I think they endeared themselves to a massive fan base that day. I mean, the crowd itself was was fantastic to get 2000 people at the gold star ground was unbelievable. I never would have dreamed of that when I first walked in the door in, in 2017. And as someone told me an interesting stat in the build up to the game is that Joe's first game in charge was a quarter final of the Suffolk County cup against Brantham athletic in front of 32 people. And you fast forward three years and we're in an FA cup quarter final in front of 2000. I'm sure there are going to be many more days like that to come because we proved on that day that we have got an enormous future ahead of us. Absolutely. And we've been talking, we've been pretty consistent throughout. I mean, you've been involved with the club much longer than I have. I've been going this season, but it was clear to see that that ambition, that drive, that close knit group, the passion which they speak. Paige was brilliant on the press conferences, was Joe, as always, Tash on football focus, great as well. Obviously, we spoke to five of the team as, and um, really great to hear from from them as well. But just as a supporter, turning up on the day, having had to park miles away from the stadium, you know that's something I hope is repeated as well because that just is a sign of success. But yeah, you, I think you said on the day beyond pride, and I think all of us kind of felt that sentiment and. As you say, the season is not over. As we were saying to the players, you know, there's there's lots to take out of that that game. We were we spoke to Simon Milton on the pod, um, and he was involved in Ipswich's ninety one ninety two championship team, which had an FA Cup. I think it was a fifth round game away at Liverpool. You know, the, mm. the team that eventually won the trophy, and in, and we asked, you know, did that um, sap the momentum or did it improve it? And, and the results turned around and we we said that i remember chatting to ek about it you know the team hasn't slackened off hasn't oh i'm gonna keep myself out of this tackle just in case i miss out of west ham none of that so the team is full bill of health now um a win against plymouth albeit probably in second gear um but you know enough pretty comfortable frankly could have done better yes but you know in a really great state and it's a massive one on sunday isn't it it's, it is massive isn't it we can't we can't beat her out of us Enormous. Yeah, it is. It's the biggest league fixture we've ever played in. Um, you know, this is the fourth meeting with Southampton this season. Every game has been incredibly cagey. There's not a lot to separate us two as sides. You know, we've had the upper hand in the last two games, obviously, knocking them out of the FA Cup and, and beating them on their turf in the league back in November. 
Um, but yeah, they, we're we're very evenly matched. We've got similar ambitions. You know, there there's a rivalry that's developed over this season. But equally, I think there's a lot of mutual respect for each other as clubs because ultimately we want to achieve the same things. And it's just a case of we're in each other's way. You know, as things stand, if we win all of our league games, we're going to be league champions. There's five to go. Five wins sees us win the title, and and that's what we're focused on. But equally, on the flip side of that, you know, Southampton do have those games in hand. And, you know, like, and they're going to be gunning for this because they know that they can put it in, in, into their hands this weekend and they will control their own destiny if they get the result they desire. So it is an enormous game. There's going to be so much on the line. And, yeah, I think both sides, I actually asked this. I mean, there'll be an interview. It might be out by the time this this, this interview goes out. But I've spoken to, to Maria Boswell for pre-match this week already. He recorded that on Tuesday, obviously Tuesday evening. And, um one of the questions I asked her was like, do you think it will follow the same trend of being cagey or do you think it might open up a bit because of what's on the line? And a part of me does think that, I think because the last three have been so tight, so cagey, and there's, like I said, not a lot to separate the two teams. But I think this time around, knowing that there's five games to go and the winner is in pole position for the league title, it just makes me wonder whether both teams are going to really go all guns blazing on, on Sunday and, uh, and that's what title races are all about at the end of the day. And, uh, yeah, we're going to need the fans to, to get right behind us on Sunday as they did at that West Ham game. And, f- and if folk are listening, so this comes out Friday. There's, it is not too late if you're still thinking, if you're still on the fence on Friday, whether you want to go on Sunday. Um, how can folk do that, Kieran? And this is probably the – we've talked a lot about True Blue – now is the time to get your value mm-hmm. out of that um, subscription, that um, that offering from the club, if you want to be part of that. Tell us about that, Kieran. Where, where can we find out more? Yeah, so this, it's a monthly uh, membership um, that is essentially the equivalent of a season ticket. Um, as I said before, you know, every pound you contribute goes towards the, the, the future of the women's programme. Um, and obviously, the, it gets you entry to your games for, for an excellent amount of money. So it starts from £5 per month. Of course, if you want to pay more than that, you can. It's completely optional. Um, but, you know, looking at April, for example, starting with this weekend, you've got Southampton. Then we've got Chichester and Selsey the following week at home. Then London Bees at home. And then Oxford United at home. So you've got four games at home in a row. Obviously, we've just played West Ham and Plymouth at home as well. So we're in the midst of a six-game home run. Uh, but four games in April for essentially a fiver. I mean, you, you're not going to get value like that anywhere else. Um, so this is the time to sign up, I think, to get your value for money. And then, you know, we hope those people that do sign up off the back of this this home run enjoy themselves and then want to continue their membership into next season. Yeah, when you've got the team in second and the team in third as part of that run, as we said, and you're watching the team in first. What more do you want? Um, Kieran, great to chat as always. Super excited for Sunday. Um, hopefully we'll be chatting to you and, and maybe some of the team as the season um, continues and hopefully comes to a positive crescendo for the team. But wish them all the very best from all of us. And um, come on, you Blues, is all I can really say. Come on, you Blues. Absolutely. Up the town. You know, this, this is our moment. You know, we've been working towards this all season. You know, we want to be league champions. We want to be in that playoff final come May. And we want to get promoted to the FA Women's Championship. So this is where we need town fans, the Blue Army, to get behind us, make a lot of noise on Sunday, be the 12th man, get us over the line in what will be the biggest league victory we've ever had. Maddie Reader, welcome to Blue Monday Podcast. You are the Her Game 2 ambassador ambassador for Ipswich, not easy for me to say. Tell us all about it. Firstly, how are you, firstly? Oh, I'm good, Rich. I'm good. I'm good. You need to tell us about the shirt behind you as well, because it's not an Ipswich Town shirt, but there is a Suffolk connection, isn't there? No, so the goalie shot behind me is um Nick Pope's shirt, signed shirt from a season or two ago. Yeah. Um, and um, my dad, he used to work at West Suffolk College, so Brilliant. with Nick. So that's sort of the link there. And They're I've also great. got a Hergo 2 shirt. Oh, well. perfect. Wow. Perfectly segued for yep. us to talk her game too. So yeah, you, as I said at the start, you are the ambassador for Ipswich Town. Tell us about that role, but for the uninitiated as well, just tell us what her game two is about. So her game two is a campaign. It was set up in May, 2021 by 12 passionate football fans, all female, just to eradicate all sexism from football. Um, So my role as an ambassador, I'm sort of like, 
I liaise with both the club and the campaign, so I'm sort of that that middle point type thing between the club. That's great. So I normally like liaise with like Liz Edwards, who's our SLO, Dan Palfrey, PR, Kieran for the ladies team, and then everyone in the campaign. We've got about forty of us, including about twelve the twelve girls in the lead team. And about the rest of us are ambassadors, so it's a, it's a growing team. We're growing literally by the day, which is great. Yeah, fantastic. And and it's not at the moment. I, I guess it's Premier League and in EFL clubs looking to affiliate, but not every ninety-two club is yet affiliated, is it? it so Ipswich is. I wouldn't say Ipswich is at the forefront, but we are relatively good at getting on board with this campaign. Yeah, yeah, we are. So I think overall, across like all of football, we've got over a hundred partnerships right um i think the main ones premier league wise got we partnered with leeds everton and if you go down championship a lot of championship teams a lot of league one pretty much all of league two as well and then if you go into non-league um we're partnered with um reading fc in the yep. wsl in the women's super league which is great and also many other like non-league teams we've partnered with a team in the czech republic brilliant um a few like we're partners with a team in America. They're like sort of like a non-league America college type team, which is great that we're go- we're going global pretty much. Oh, that's brilliant. Are, are they? Are you affiliated with Norwich City yet? Um, we've got an ambassador, but we're not. We haven't got like a partnership or anything with them okay. yet. So another tick in the box for the Ipswich yeah. and Norwich rivalry there. Um, so this weekend is the first weekend. I need to get the the kind of description right. The first weekend where um, Ipswich Town matches, both for the men's team and the women's team, are kind of designated as supporting their, their campaign. Is that right? And um, tell us what's going on as well. So, yeah, like you said, the games against Cambridge on Saturday for the men's and Southampton for the women's on Sunday are dedicated to her game too. So normally our dedicated fi- fixture, we're going to have um, both the men's and the women's team wearing like warm-up shirts so it's like when they warm up it's like normally like for like level level playing field they wear them they wore some ones for ukraine like that type of thing and um there's loads of stuff happening there's going to be like in the programs going to have like a little flyer dedicated to her game too we've got what else have we got we've got loads of stuff happening it's going to be like a stand in the fan zone and members of the whatsapp group which fans can join are going to be there i'll be there um, but on both Saturday and the Sunday, hopefully getting three points. Yeah, exactly right. Wow, big games for both teams as well. And and just kind of explain to us the importance of her game too, because I suspect, you know, when when these kind of initiatives come out, there's always a little bit of hesitancy, probably a little bit of fear of change and what it means for people. But it's really important that we make Portman Road as welcoming a place as possible. We've spoken to Rainbow Tractors. We know about Kick It Out and all that kind of stuff. This is no different. It shouldn't be. A, it shouldn't matter who you are. If you want to support Ipswich Town, Portman Road should be a welcoming place. And that's all her game too is trying to do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly what we're trying to do. I think the club released some stats um, when we did a press release a couple of days ago. I think it was... 18.2 percent season ticket holds from last season a female wow like they are the only stats we have for any clubs but it's just to show we need to get more female fans at the game and hopefully with the 41 percent or whatever mark ashton mentioned in the fans forum hopefully a majority of them are female we just get increased to female numbers yeah exactly right and and, and kind of what There'll be, again, a lot of people listening who kind of think, well, I'm very welcoming and very happy for female supporters to to be um, watching games at Portman Road. I have no issue with that at all. Um, I, need, I obviously, you know, we talked about rainbow tractors and making sure people, the way they express themselves at the football is, is something that is going to be acceptable to everyone and, and isn't going to be exclu- excluding anyone. What can the average Ipswich Town fan who's who's keen to support, what can they do to get behind you? And, you know, wh- wh- where can we find out more information and that kind of stuff? So you can find out more information on our, on our website. We've also got a Twitter, Facebook and Instagram page, which are all at Home Game 2. Um, if you want to report anything, Ipswich Town have their own designated phone number, which they have like around posters, all, all dotted around the same. They've got like one just inside of the Magnus stand. There's always one in the fan zone. Um, that we have like a lot of merchandise, like the shirt there. We've got hoodies, bags. We've got loads of stuff. It's just 
I just think her going to is just such a such a I'm, not, I'm being biased because I'm part of it but it's just such a like a revolutionary campaign and it's just the hope that we have to hopefully eradicate sexism or any form of discrimination at football itself yeah here, here. So hergame2.co.uk, I think, is is the yeah. website, isn't it? Where can we find you on Twitter as well, Maddie? Um, so I'm, I'm at Twitter at maddiereid07. Um, and I, if any fans, you know, want to discuss anything, report anything, just my DMs are open. So, yeah. That's great. And finally, I can't let you go without, you mentioned two massive fixtures this weekend uh dare i ask for a prediction for Ooh. the cambridge game and the southampton game cambridge oh, obviously we, we all know what happened last time against cambridge don't we yeah. um i think we'll win i i just feel like what well, did mark actually say about twenty three thousand season tickets at the moment not season ticket tickets off for the game um two nil two nil to us yeah and southampton the sunday it's a big it's tight, isn't it it's, it's going to be a big game, isn't it? It's basically title decider. Pretty much, we're, yeah. on, we're on 54 points, they're on 50. We've pretty much got the same form. I think we'll win. I've okay. got faith in us. Got faith. I think, we'll, I think it'll be like a, it'll be quite a scrappy 1-0. Scrappy 1-0. I will take a scrappy 1-0. Yeah. Maddie, great to chat. Um, do go and see Maddie in the fan zone. Um, engage on Twitter um, and get behind her game too. Um both in advance and around the game as well. Maddie, thank you very much. It's all right. So there you go. Um, plenty of stuff going on there. Obviously a big weekend for ITFC women. Um, we, As you just said to Kieran, we wish them all the very best and we'll be uh, talking about that. Possibly uh, we're trying to get the flagship show out um, for as quickly as we can. So we might deal with the women's game um, if we record the flagship early at some other point in the week as well. But we wish them all the very best and obviously give all our support to Maddie and her game too as well. Go and visit her in the fan zone and get involved in that as well. Um, let's talk about Cambridge, Seb. Let's focus at the matter at hand here. Um, very quickly, is it a local derby? To no. the point we start to start? It isn't no. Really, is we it? Had this, I remember having this debate with you back in October. It can't be a derby, can it? I mean, you know, Christ, when we come to the head table, we've only played each other something like six times in our entire existence. So, you know, it's it's a big game. Uh, it's a big game for, for them. It's a big game for us. And, you know, it gets all the respect it deserves. But I, I don't think you can possibly call it a derby. I guess their derby is probably Peterborough, Northampton yeah. or somebody. I don't know. Yeah. I think um, so. but Oxford I as well. I think there's a weird rivalry with Oxford because of the, okay. the boat race or the universities or something, I think. Oh. Of course, right. Okay, yeah. No, I, 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 I can't possibly class it as a derby. You can't either, surely. No, no. Um, but we give Cambridge enough respect because they've had a pretty decent campaign back at this level for the first time in twenty odd years, and looking like at the moment they're 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 going to stay up. Yeah, com- um, admittedly, com- in terms of form, Sorry, it's yeah. not not great at the moment, Seb. Is it? But sixteenth in the league is pretty decent. Very decent, yeah. Forty-eight points so far from their return. I mean, when they when they lost Paul Mullen in the summer to Wrexham, and that was a, a transfer that caught. We went on a freeze; so he was out of contract. But that was a move that created, you know, raised a lot of eyebrows. And I think a lot of people kind of thought, "Hang on a minute, that's their their main goal scorer." You know, the the side was kind of built around him, producing the goods at the top end of the pitch, and losing him is going to be a massive, massive blow. And I thought they'd be involved in a, a relegation scrap, but they've done pretty well this season. Haven't they? They're they're sixteenth in the league, forty-eight points, played thirty-nine games, won twelve, drawn. Drawn 12 and lost 15, scored 47 goals and conceded 59. So yeah, it's a it's a very good uh, first first season back up in this uh, this this tier. But struggled of of late. There was this the resurgence around just after Christmas time when they beat Newcastle in the the FA Cup and then they beat Portsmouth in the in, is it still the Johnsons whatever it Pizza Cup Pizza Cup Papa John's. Yeah, I think they beat they kind of had a double bubble in the cup and then turned that into a three game winning streak against Lincoln, Doncaster and Crewe. But ever since then, the form isn't great and in terms of the form table, Seb, and the last few matches... Yeah, Not great reading, is it? No, only one win in the last five. There are three defeats and a draw in that time. So they are 20th in the form table over the last six games or so. So they won last time out against Wimbledon last weekend. So that was their, their first win uh, after that run. So they have broken that duck now. So I guess they'll be going into the weekend on some confidence. But, but recently, it's, it's not been great for them. And worth saying that that win over Wimbledon was I'm not going to say fortuitous uh, it took a long range goal 
to win it. And I think Wimbledon had the better chances in that one as well. I, something that I've kind of picked up is I, they're kind of a little bit of a flat track bully, which is exactly what you have to do to stay in this division. If, if, you're, if your target is survival, you need to build the, beat the teams around you. And they've done that. But otherwise, the wins, there's a good tuna win against Plymouth a few a month or so ago, which 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 stands alone, really. You know, the wins against the likes of AFC Wimbledon that they beat, they beat them twice. That run that I mentioned around um, just after Christmas against Doncaster and Crew Lincoln were out of form at that time. Burton, Morecambe, you know, these are the teams that they're they're beating. That's great. But it, again, it gives you an indication of the stature of this team, right? Yeah, and it's what you have to do, like you said. You know, they have to beat those sides in and around them to make sure they are they are comfortable. And to be fair to them, they've done exactly what's required. You know, I, I, I if you'd have offered them what mid table, sixteenth, fifteenth in the league at the start of the season, they'd have absolutely snapped your hand off. Especially considering the Mullin sale. So I, I think they've done really, really well and should be applauded. Have you seen Ryan Reynolds' latest advert? Yeah, which features the Wrexham squad, and he. Have you seen all the well. outtakes and stuff where he gets? Oh, Ryan there are Reynolds outtakes take. as well. Yeah, there's out there's outtakes oh, of it and stuff that. where, understandably, obviously players start laughing, and he's right there, isn't he? In Paul Mullins' face, Mullins and Paul face. Mullins starts Mullin. starts giggling to himself, and ah, oh, yeah, it's a it's a good watch. There's a documentary I think coming out, isn't there, about the whole Wrexham takeover and stuff? One of those Spurs till I die type things. So that'll be uh, that'll be certainly very entertaining. Yeah, we need, if anyone needs a documentary, it's us, but hey ho. We'll, we had offers. We'll we did, I'm sure Ashton said at one point we had offers, but they felt it wasn't the right thing to do. I'm sure he said that at one of the. the it's a distraction, isn't it? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? In terms of the away, so let's focus. We've kind of talked to the season overall. The away form actually is Decent. probably better than the home form. I kind of thought we'll talk about the, the game against us earlier in the season. I kind of considered that. The home form would be the core of their success here, but actually, in terms of the away form, thirteenth in the away league, as it were, is is pretty good going, isn't it? Yeah, twenty points. Uh, they played twenty, won five, drawn five, and lost ten. Scored twenty four goals away from home and conceded thirty nine. So it's it is decent form away from home. It's slightly higher, thirteenth, like you say, rather than their actual league position. And normally with these promoted sides, you normally find they have to try and make their their home ground a fortress, don't we? And you know every point is a prisoner, and you're quite uh, tightly packed in and create a horrible atmosphere, that kind of stuff. But but they seem pretty comfortable playing away from home. Yeah, let's talk about this two or draw because it feels like. We've we've spoken about the up the the ups and the and this is kind of a down really in terms of the Paul Cook era, um, this two all draw where we're two nil up and and f- the famous quote afterwards. Can you remind us of the famous quote after this one, Seb? Aren't you going to do the accent one more time? Surely it's a, and it's an excuse to pull the accent out of the bag one last time. Right, I'll, you, I'll, um... I'll go through the match report first while you prep yourself. So we all remember it was the two all draw. Sonny Aluko scored twice. One was a really long distance kind of lob, wasn't it? If I remember correctly, when the the goalkeeper had a bit of a a bit of a brain fart. So yep, two nil up and relatively cruising. And then Wes Houlihan starts to pull a few pull a few uh, strings, and we we concede to two one. And at that time, we'd already dropped points against MK Dons in a two two all draw, AFC Wimbledon in a two all draw. So I guess we kind of might have realised what was going to happen. And then Joe Ironside in the 88th minute just gets up and above. I think it was Toto, wasn't it? And uh, and, and and slams home an equaliser. And after the game, Paul Cook comes out and says, "So it's easy to sit there." and say about what you've done. As a manager, I've never believed in shutting up shop. That's not my style. We travel in Zipswich Town, and we should score again in second half. Unfortunately for us, we never. There you go. It was all right, wasn't it? I didn't do the key change. I was going to say, you kept it relatively consistent compared to the, the ups and downs. I can't remember. Normal, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great yeah, to hear sure. from Paul again. It's, it's he's like back. He's, yeah, he's back. But Mark Ashton. And he's not shutting up shop. At, sorry, he's not shutting up shop at Chesterfield, is he? No, right. maybe maybe you should not practice this lesson. kind of stuff. Yeah, this is exactly why we are where we are, and we're trying to chase down these playoffs because of games like like the Cambridge game. You know, we were in total control and we absolutely messed it up. And you can count, can't you? Probably getting nearly into double figures the amount of times we messed things up through our own stupidity and naivety and and just lack of in game management. You know, you, you couldn't possibly believe if we were tuning up in a game under McKenna. I know we don't get any goals now at all, but if we did, if somebody pulls one back against us, McKenna would make obvious changes. You know. Know, things would would change straight away from the touchline and we would comfortably see the game out to to come out with a statement like that afterwards to say it's not my style to protect leads and you know guarantee three points is is just crazy and i think that's probably the time when a few of us started to thought hang on a minute this this isn't going as we thought it was going to go and yeah there might be a a change in the offing but then three nights later didn't we go and batter pompey four nil 
So it was yeah, a, a crazy so is, time. Yeah, these are the up and down. So we beat Shrewsbury before that, draw with Cambridge, then beat Portsmouth, beat Fleetwood, and then lose to Plymouth, then beat Wickham. It was it was yeah, when we were starting to yo-yo a bit, wasn't it? And yeah, yeah, as you say, we've gone from that to um, world class coach. Quote Mark Ashton. Uh, we mentioned the head to head. Not really a huge amount to talk about there, apart from it's another team where we haven't got a league <laughs> win. Who was it where we were talking about the other week? We hadn't got a league win away. It was Oxford. We'd never won at Oxford, had we? We'd oh, beaten crap. them at Portman Let's move Road, on. But we'd, Let's move we'd on. Never won Let's move on. Move on. Move on. Um, it's 2-2-2, two, 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 isn't it, in terms of wins, draws? Yeah, our two are in the league cup, aren't they? So, yeah. Ne- never beat them in the league, but don't worry about that. Shh, shh, shh. And their run-in run is not particularly... I mean, there's some hashtag winnable games in there for them, isn't there? But not a particularly attractive fixture list to end the season with, is it? Not really, no. I mean, they've got us away, they've got Wickham at home, they've got Wigan away, and they've got Sunderland away. So they are playing a few, what, four of the, the top eight, so to speak. So they might have a little bit of a say. Hopefully they can do us a favour and, and take some points off the likes of Wickham and, and, and Sunderland. Yeah. But yeah, it's not the easiest of run-ins, which is why, again, it's so important they are where they are. They've kind of pretty much done the hard work now. They've also got to play the likes of Morecambe uh, and Cheltenham and Charlton. So they'll be easy. they're will be they not going to go down. Um, and hopefully they want to finish the season with a bit of a bit of confidence. That's the real quiz, isn't it? Talk to us about the boss um, kind of living every football fan's dream, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, Mark Bonner. So he's been there in full charge since January 2020. Played 111 games, managed 111 games. I do that every week, don't I? Every week. Every week. Uh, Always the same. Uh, 153, (laughs) drawn 22 and lost 36, uh, which averages 1.63 points per game. He kind of joined the club in 2011 in an academy role. He was caretaker once before they appointed Colin Calderwood. Then when they fired him, he got made the uh, the caretaker again and he did well and they obviously appointed him into the, the permanent position. So yeah, he's a uh, a local lad done well. He's, he's worked his way through the ranks and he's, he's doing a really good job there, isn't he? Because, you know, I mean, they must have one of the, the smallest budgets in the league by a mile. So he's definitely got them overperforming as to, as to where they should be. Yeah, one time season ticket holder as well. So, um, yeah, living the dream and very highly thought of there and starting to put a bit of a reputation further afield as well. So um, good luck to him. I'm not sure he might be one. Yeah, maybe potentially he might be one. People start to look at from further up the food chain. You know, he did really well last year to get them up and then they've, they finished comfortably, you know, this year. So is he one where maybe eyes might be sort of started to, to sway towards him? We don't know. Yeah, the guys, are, they're not the top 20 podcast did their top five managers outside. I think it was outside the championship, you know, in League One and League Two. McKenna was the first one they spoke about. They really yeah. need to stop talking about Kieran McKenna <laughs> in such high regard. But Mark Bonner was another one there. So, yeah, he is, he's gathering a reputation outside of Cambridgeshire um, and maybe League One as well. You never know. In terms of some of the, the what to kind of expect from them, in terms of we've talked about the goals, they're kind of 50 50 split between home and away. So, actually, their home, uh, sorry, their away goals scored record is pretty decent in the division. It's the 10th, ten- they're the 10th highest away scorers um but this there's this weird stat here they 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 don't really try a huge amount of shots from outside the box but when they do they generally score they've got a really good kind of conversion rate from these shots outside the area um the goals otherwise pretty well spread which isn't a surprise they've got the joint highest own goals for in the division along with Sunderland for with four um and yeah i mean possession wise they I, I, I've seen them, seen them of late and they do like to pass it out from the back, but the possession stats aren't particularly good. Not amazing, are they? 44.8%, which is the 17th in the league. So accuracy is similar. Though. I think the accuracy is about 67, 68% accuracy. So, you know, this isn't going to be a side that looks to to keep the ball. They'll kind of sit off and let us kind of pass it around and they'll they'll pack areas of the midfield and try and make it, you know, tough to tough to break down. They're, they're not going to be ones like, a, like an MK Dons. They're going to look to pass us off the pitch or anything. They'll be perfectly happy to sit back and let us have the ball. And talking about the defensive records, I think 59 goals overall conceded there. Uh, uh, This is probably stats that you'd expect for a team in 16th, right? Very much so, yeah. I mean, what's what's worth noting as well is 39 of those 59 goals have been conceded away from home. So it is a side that, you know, do do, do concede when they're not playing at the Abbey Stadium. They're averaging 1.5 goals against per game. They have kept 12 clean sheets, which I thought was quite decent for a side kind of in 16th. You know, that's probably, what, a quarter of the season or so, uh, clean sheet-wise. So I thought that was that was pretty decent. They're a low tackling team. Uh, they've got the lowest away tackles per game at just over 11. Um, mm-hmm. Sorry? 
uh, that kind of go figure then you know conceding yeah, quite a lot of away goals it's yeah and, and all these, if you're not to the tackles yeah and all these stats kind of explain exactly why they they are where they are they're not overly dirty the average kind of nine just over nine to, to, to 9.5 uh, fouls per game which i think is is 20th or so in the league so they're not an overly dirty side they're very good at avoiding counter-attack goals they don't concede many penalties they don't tend to make too many individual errors and they're pretty strong from defending set pieces as well they've only conceded six from set pieces obviously we know we're no threat whatsoever from set pieces as as uh, as kieran joked about at the fans forum the other night so I wouldn't. I don't expect to see any uh, any goals from set pieces this weekend. Put it that way. I've watched some of the previous um, games they've played, and I I wonder whether they zonal mark because quite a few of the goals they concede tend to be because someone's lost a man. You know, there's a there's a midfielder that's bombing on order. There's a player that is that makes a little run off the shoulder of someone, and suddenly is completely unmarked. Crosses come into the box, particularly high crosses. Mk Don's the goal that. They won the game at the Abbey Stadium where it was a long throw in and it seemed to be utter chaos. The ball landed at the feet of the forward who just laid it off for this, for someone to tap in. I wonder whether that's something that... Um, I, I might be wrong, may, and maybe that's just... You said they don't make too many errors, but maybe in that instance they did, but it might be systemic errors rather than individual errors. So that might be something to look out for is the kind of zonal marking or the, the positional awareness of players around them. And obviously we like to get people forward particularly on the outside so that might be an opportunity there not great on crosses into the box either um they might not concede too many but they definitely concede chances from those so that will be that'll be interesting to see there and you know we said kind of mixed passing style there's definitely a there's width there is pace in that width we'll talk about players in a second let's talk about formation said talk to us about that so it's going to be a good old-fashioned Paul Cook 4-2-3-1. That's what they've used the vast majority of the time this season. They've used it on 27 occasions. Uh, but sometimes it does become more of a 4-5-1. If you look at the heat map sort of away from home, they do sometimes look to pack that midfield a little bit. But it, they'll, they'll essentially line up as a, as a 4-2-3-1. In, in terms of the key personnel, they've got a few injuries and a few players missing. I guess we'll come on to a, a couple of familiar faces and one very, very old now adversary who might well come back into the side. But the keeper will be D- Dimitar Mitov, he was the guy in goal when Sonny Aluko chipped him from from where I was just, just into the inside their half, wasn't it? It was a lovely yeah, finish. Yeah, it was about like 35 correctly. yards, something like that. Yeah, it was great, wasn't it? He's made 37 appearances, so he's the, the undisputed number one. They've got a guy, William Mannion, who is the uh, the backup. The defence should be fairly settled from what well, they've played in recent games. So George Williams will be the right back. He's got one goal and three assists in 36 appearances. He likes to get forward and uh, and get a, in, up in advance of the halfway line. Centre-backs, I'll let you pronounce this guy, because if I do it, you're just going to take the mick out of me, aren't you? Jubril Okadina. Ek- o- you missed a trick there. I thought you were going to say Lloyd Jones, the next guy to completely throw me <laughs> under the bus and leave me having to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, um, he'll play 23 appearances. Uh, interestingly, they've had nine clean sheets. Nine of their 12 clean sheets have come when Jibril's played. So he clearly is a bit of a bit of an asset at the back there. Lloyd Jones, he might well get rested. So he had a he had a nasty injury and he's only just coming back. They had to rush him back for the Shrewsbury and the Shifford Wednesday games. So Bonner's come out in, the, in their pre-match press conference today and said he, they're not sure he's going to be up to three games in a week. So he might well have to sit out. He likes to maraud and, and get forward and I guess if he does sit out then potentially Sam Shering who's on loan from Bournemouth might well come into the back four to replace him and the left back is Harrison Dunk he's got one goal no assists in 31 appearances he's kind of he's, he's the reserve left back their, their first choice is a guy called Jack Ardale who is back in training after a uh, I think he's had an ankle injury he's back in training now but again in the pre-match today Bonner came out and said it might just come too soon for him this weekend and he likes to bomb it as well. The fullbacks are going to overlap. So that's something to look out for. Um, a familiar name in the central midfield, Seb? Diggers. Diggers. Good old, good old Paul Digby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I can't remember how many appearances he made for us. Was it any more than half a dozen? I don't know. One of those signings out the blue in the... 2015-16 season was it? Yeah, on loan, and then we signed him permanently. And he'll be their their defensive linchpin. He's the the captain. Uh, he's got no goals and and the three assists in 38 appearances. Uh, his, his stats are all based around that defensive screening job that he does for the team. So average of 1.3 interceptions per game, 1.9 tackles per game, 3.3 clearances. So he will simply sit back 
protect that defense and allow the, the more creative and the more attacking players in front of him to work their magic. Alongside him is likely to be Adam May, the goal scorer from, uh, from last weekend against Wimbledon. Uh, he likes to play more advanced. He's got five goals and three assists in 33 appearances, and he likes to get the shots off from range. It was a long range, wasn't it, against, uh, against Wimbledon? Yeah, so he likes to get his shots off from range. So he's a bit of a danger man there. And having Digby alongside him allows, it gives him that license to move forward into the space and, and kind of link up with the number 10 and the wide players and, and get in support of the, of the goal scorers. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's move it on to the, the kind of attacking three because, again, there's a familiar name for folk who recall the game from um, back in September or whenever it was. Yeah, so Sam Smith will play in the right forward position. He's a player I really, really like. He can do a job both up front and out wide. He, he kind of filled in. They had a bad injury to their strike who, who missed six weeks or so, so he filled it up there, but he's having a really good season. He's got 11 goals and one assist from 39 appearances. If you look at his heat map, he very much likes to cut inside and look to get shots off. Um, so Dominic Thompson might have his hands full there. He's got to watch him very, very carefully. Attacking midfield. So it might be a guy called Harvey Nibs, um, who's got two goals and two assists from 27 appearances. Is, or I think our good friend, Mr. Wesley Houlihan, this is going to be made for him to come back into the side, hasn't it? He's not featured. He was subbed at half time in their 6 0 thrashing at Sheffield Wednesday. And he's kind of been a, a player off the bench since then, but surely he's going to come in. He's going to be bang up for this. He's really going to want to ruin our. At our, Portman Road as well. At Portman Road, exactly. He'll want to ruin our, our playoff kind of chances. He's got one goal and six assists so far this season. I thought I remember him being quite quiet for the majority of the game. Back back in October, then started to have more and more influence in the second half, didn't he, when they started to grow into the game. So he's 39 now, so he's not going to be able to get all around the pitch, but he's still going to have that that eye for a pass and that bit of quality. So if I was a betting man, I think he will probably start in that number 10 position behind the striker. Yep. I, I like Brophy. He's got real pace down that left-hand side. Good player. Yeah, he scored in the two-all draw in October. Well, that's his only goal so far this season, but he's got four assists as well in 38 appearances. He will get up and down the touchline all day. He'll go back and support Dunk in the left-back position, and he's got a great engine on him. He will run and run and run. Um, he's, he's a really good player, and he looks to, to run with the ball and get them up the pitch quickly. Yeah, and um, and you mentioned Sam Smith there as well. I mean, he almost becomes a, a second striker at times. You know, 11 goals is pretty good going but as you say he is kind of he is picked in that right wing position there so you know, it's, it's not too dissimilar numbers in terms of goals to where's burns i guess but one assist tells you the story there he definitely he will cut inside there and he will kind of get alongside a name that's probably familiar to those of you who remember the newcastle oh I need to say the ipswich game was back in october by the way not september there will be people listening here are going it was october you idiot oh, yeah. so there you go i've Sorry. corrected myself <laughs> Yeah, the main man, Joe Ironside, he's there. Their focal point, their main striker after Paul Mullen departed. 12 goals uh, so far this season. My script says 23 assists, which I don't think is correct. So he's either got two or three, I'm guessing. I'll order that. Go on, keep going. Uh, 31 appearances so far this season. He's not scored for seven games. He's decent in the air, but he's, he's not got a goal since January the 15th. He did miss six weeks out with an injury, but his last goal came mid-January against Lincoln. So for him, he's on a pretty a, a pretty poor run of form as he looks to come back. Is it two assists? Is it two assists? Not uh, He's looking... He's looking to, to, to get back on the, the goal trail. He likes to put his back to goal, hold the ball up and involve the number 10 and involve the right winger and the left winger. You know, he's a good old fashioned, pretty much like a Daryl Murphy kind. That's the best way to think of him. Maybe not quite as, as, as skillful or as powerful in the shot, but he'll definitely hold the ball up and look to bring others into play. And the backup striker, who doesn't really feature, to be honest, is a guy called Laurent Talage, who's on loan from Brighton. He's quite highly thought of at Brighton, by all accounts. Uh, a decent loan for Brighton, but he doesn't really figure because Joe Einside is the main guy. And if Joe Einside is missing, they tend to shift Sam Smith into that central position. So, so he, he'll be the, the backup cover on the bench. We mentioned Jack Lancaster. Nope, not yet so far. So he, he, he's a bit of, a, a, bit of a, a, a pity season, a bit part player so far this year. I think he got on the pitch against Newcastle. Did he score and have a goal disallowed? Did I remember rightly in the Thanks, FA Cup game? Yeah, he's, he's only played, I think, five games. Uh, I think he scored one goal, but he's very much a bench option. He was on the bench in midweek, so he's like to be on the be on the bench. And I guess he'll come onto one of those wide positions either for for Brophy or for uh, or for Sam Smith if the game isn't going their way. Uh, they've got a few injuries as well. They've got Liam O'Neill. Um, he's been out with a calf injury for a good 
few weeks. He failed a fitness test for the for the game last weekend against Wimbledon. Central midfield player. So there's a thought he might potentially come back onto the bench. They've got Shilo Tracy, who's a former ITFC trialist. He's a bench option as well. And they've got their um, sort of their stalwart at the back is a guy called Greg Taylor, but he fractured his ankle. I think he's 34, 35 year old. He fractured his ankle back in August and he's out for the season. So they've got a few players missing, but but Lancaster is is very much a bench option as it is at the moment. So that's Cambridge. In terms of decisions that Kieran McKenna has got to make, it's it's the kind of usual conversation that we have every week on this show now, isn't it? Yeah. About the options. I guess, is it a case of if it's not broke, don't fix it? I think so. I, I think Norwood starts. I think, you know, he got the assist. He was hustling and bustling and causing problems. Uh, McKenna came out afterwards and said they, they, they played him because of Plymouth playing a higher back line. And after Jackson, he's the most suitable to do that. So I, I think he'll well start again. I think he probably deserves to start. Obviously, he got to the hour mark, didn't it? And him and, Luke, him and Sonny Aluko got hooked because they were they were clearly starting to, to blow a little bit. So, you know, whether he can do a full 90 minutes is is up for debate. But I think he'll definitely start. Selena, we know, will start. I mean, you know, the, the pre-assist for the goal was superb that ball over the top and that pass with the outside of his boot to find Burns when he was through on goal and missed it was a hell of a pass so Selena I would say is nailed on and then it'll be either Chaplin or Aluko at, at home and given how well he played last week I think Aluko probably keeps his spot doesn't he which is very harsh on Chaplin you know I, I really really like Chaplin he's such a positive player and looks to put himself about he's a bit of a pest isn't he and he presses well but at home I think Aluko's got that that nice little bit of you know composure and touch and and awareness and I th- I think it'll probably be Selena Norwood and Luco for me. Yeah, I think I agree with that as well. Though don't put it past McKenna to make a little bit of a tactical tweak. I suspect it might be Chaplin for Luco if it's anything, but I think Selena is now nailed down his position, Definitely. isn't he? So it's, absolutely, it's, we've gone from kind of three players to kind of speculate about to probably two. So yeah, I think I agree with you there. Prediction, Seb. Uh, confident uh, I think we'll break the hoodoo and we'll finally beat them in the league I think we'll win by a couple of goals be it a 2-0 a or a 3-1 or a maybe I mean they do score oh, well, their, their away form is quite decent so I'll go for a 3-1 I think they'll score but I think we should see that out quite comfortably to be honest I'm going for a McKenna special 1-0 is that all um, do you reckon you're not more no, I think I think we'll dominate but I think you know, we we haven't got too many goals about us. I, I, I'd like to be more, but you always are on the side of positivity. <laughs> I, I maybe drag us a bit the other way. So possibly the truth is a 2-0 win somewhere in the middle. So fingers crossed there, but both of us confident and for good reason as well. So um, it'll be interesting to see how things go. Worth mentioning, of course, that we'll be talking about this on the flagship show. That will come out Sunday evening, we hope, with Ben in the host chair along with Dave and Craig, I want to say. Yep. Um, again, I, I should know this because I'm the one who sorts it all out. <laughs> Worth also um, keeping a lookout for on, on our YouTube channel now that we put a post-match reaction, kind of instant, sort of 10 minutes or so um, from the pers- folk who have been at the game. I think you and I might be doing yep. that one, Seb. So um, I will be there. You will be, I'll be listening in from afar. The, the eyes so on the ground. You can ask me the question about um, Aluko and Chaplin and on and Norwood um, so look out for that on our YouTube channel and obviously also still available on our YouTube channel and our podcast feed in fact as well is the, the live Q&A with Mikey and Joe from Wednesday night the Mark Ashton TWTD collaboration special and while you're there um, go listen to Simon Milton as well particularly part two where it dovetails really neatly because he had very positive things to say about Mark Ashton as well in the direction and certainly Kieran McKenna as well so that's still available as well so give that a listen too also, if you are um, looking to interact with us on a kind of more frequent or day-to-day basis, do join um, our our Telegram group. You can do that via the link on our website. Um, effectively, it's through a, um, a provider called Leveler. Um, here's the link here. We'll, we obviously tweet this out every now and then. But essentially, it's it's like Twitter, how Twitter used to be in the good old days said before, faceless accounts and trolling and all that kind of stuff. So I've really enjoyed the chat over the last couple of weeks or so. It's been really Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? it? It's a place where we can have reasoned, sensible debates. We have we don't just cover Ipswich Town. There are about, what, seven, eight groups now, including a cricket 
group to keep Craig and Dave happy. I, I pay no attention to that one whatsoever. But we, we talk general football, we talk the podcast, we talk Ipswich, and it's great. You know, we put polls in there, and we, we do a couple of sneak peeks of upcoming events and stuff, don't we? And it's just it's just great to build that community and get that 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 energy after a game is superb. I mean, last week at, at the the Plymouth game, you know, we we, we create a match day, day day group, and and people are putting pictures in there and selfies and discussing the game, and that conversation went on quite way into the night. You know, it's great to have that that level of energy and enthusiasm and buying it's just a, a great place to go and chat to his town without like you say the 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 nastier side of social media shall we say indeed so give that a look as i say blue monday itfc.co.uk the website all the links for our pod feed our videos our social media and the link to sign up for telegram as well um, first two weeks is free then there is a subscription but hopefully you'll feel it's justified once you've tried it out so um yeah come and join us there seb thank you as always for your um sage opinion your uh, your research and for powering through under the weather as well um i will let you have the final word where i'll say thank you everyone for watching um and seb over to you to say goodbye Thanks very much. Uh, everyone have a great time. Get yourself to the Greyhound beforehand. I think it's going to be cold. So if you get get there early and get oh, the yeah, boots, sorry. make sure you whack the whack the heater on. We're in partnership with the Greyhound. Yeah, so we need to big them up as well. It's a home game. So head to the Greyhound, the best pre-match pub in Ipswich. And as you say, the, what was the shaker there about? Definitely. No, I'm just, I'm, pub. It's good job I'm paying attention, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, I've I just pressed the buttons. I'm not even Brilliant. doing that tonight. Yeah, so head to the Greyhound, best pre-match pub in Ipswich. Seb, sorry, you were saying. Absolutely. Get yourselves to the ground. Go and see Rich and the guys there. Make sure you get the heater on if you're in one of the booths. Big game. Another three points needed before we go into the Shrewsbury game. We might finally get three wins on the bounce, maybe. But a massive game. Should be a great crowd. A big following from Cambridge. And come on, you Blues.